I'd like to call to order the May 11th meeting of the Santa Barbara City Council Ordinance Committee. Uh, Ms. Peterson, would you please call the roll? Ordinance Committee Chair Bendy White. Here. Ordinance Committee Member Grant House. Here. Ordinance Committee Member Frank Hotchkiss. Here. Thank you. And would you please uh, read the item for review today? The item before the committee today is the ordinance amendments related to construction prohibited in the vicinity of the Conejo landslide. Thank you. And then, Mr. Estrella, are you giving the presentation? Mr. Chair, I, uh, I agreed with Mr. Estrella that I, I'd uh, kick off the discussion. Right. Thank you. I think because uh, I've worked on this subject since 1984, since the original ordinance, <clears throat> and was very much involved in that ordinance and the drafting of it and the, all of the amendments that have occurred over the years. Uh, what you have before you today are two separate ordinances, essentially uh, at the request of uh, the property, uh, a group of property owners in the Conejo Road area. The first ordinance is actually um, uh, something that uh, is, has always been anticipated by the city in these ordinances, and that's uh, a process that uh, allows for administrative flexibility in terms of the building prohibition uh, on the Conejo slide. In other words, the 1984 ordinance and each version of it since that time has had some sort of process, and this has actually evolved to be more detailed over the years, some sort of process to go to the city building official and say, if we prepare, if we have a new report, a new geologist report that indicates that perhaps the nature of the slide uh, with respect to our property is a little different or perhaps that the slide, the area of concern can actually be revised to exclude uh, the, a particular parcel or a large part of a particular parcel. That's always been something the city was willing to consider. And in fact, uh, in 1999, there was a property owner that came to the city and asked that specific question uh, in two forms. She asked, or they asked, the Kirchhoffs, if the city was willing to consider uh, a new report to exempt their property from the slide prohibition, the prohibition on new construction, and also to consider whether the, the prohibition on new construction applied in the event there was a fire and a, build, and a home was destroyed. At that point, uh, the city council uh, was pretty clear, and this is again 1999, that they would consider uh, any geologist report uh, that indicated that the dimensions of the slide area should be revised so long as the city obtained peer review of that report. We had our own independent expert look at the report and if he or she agreed, then we would uh, presumably move forward with revising the, the dimensions of the slide area. And second, the answer to the second question was at that point, the city council decided that no, that in the event there, a home was destroyed by fire within the slide area, the idea was that these homes would not be rebuilt. And I think that really goes back to the original intent in 1984 when the city realized that the, the, the essentially bad geology in this area, and um, you know, just by the nature of geology, it's not going to change anytime soon. And uh, with the history, even in, in 1984, uh, with the history of um, homes being destroyed as a result of earth movement back then, and, and again, it had occurred in the 70s. And I should mention that this apparently related to the very wet year of 1983. And of course, there seems to be a connection to, to getting uh, some uh, very uh, rainy years, uh, one maybe one in particular or several years in a row, and this uh, slide reactivating. Uh, I'll defer to George and to uh, Mr. Kenton's here, I see. Frank Kenton, uh, the original geologist that the city retained in 1984 to study this. So I'll defer to them in terms of the nature of this, this danger. But um, it's clear that this was something that the city needed to deal with. And the, the city council's intention, and I sort of speak uh, as a uh, person, a staff person who participated in it, was eventually over time, the homes in this slide area would be removed, maybe through obsolescence, maybe through uh, 
a casualty such as a fire or whatever it might be, even to the point that in the 1990s, the, the city uh, staff, uh, at the request of some property owners again, uh, created a, a hazard, a geological hazard area. And that creation of that hazard area, the creation of a nonprofit corporation to take title to some of these properties, allowed some of these property owners to actually sell their property to the state, if you will. The state didn't take title to the property. The title was transferred to the nonprofit corporation. And the, the, the homeowners were paid, I believe, 75% of the fair market value of their homes. Uh, anyway, today what we have is, again, another, this first ordinance, uh, iteration of uh, the city's of willingness to look at revising the boundaries of this slide mass and, in, in effect, to revise the area where new construction is prohibited. Uh, and I'll let George and Mr. Kenton describe the, the recent studies that have brought us to that point. There is a minor thing that I think uh, Mr. Estrella is suggesting in, uh, also on that ordinance, and that's a bit more flexibility for the construction of accessory buildings and accessory improvements. And uh, I think uh, we have found that whether it's a retaining wall or a driveway, the ordinance probably could use a bit more flexibility for non-habitable structures, even within the slide area. So that's another aspect of this ordinance. The second ordinance relates to, specifically apparently, to a property located at 1809 Stanwood, where uh, the property owner, the, the most recent property owner, uh, uh, believed that her, uh, the structure that she bought was, a, was eligible as a structure of merit, was, uh, and uh, went out and obtained a historic resources report for that structure, had that report submitted to the City Landmarks Commission, and succeeded in convincing the commission that that was a structure of merit. So uh, this structure, which our records indicate was really nothing ever more than a, an outbuilding or a shed, uh, is now a city structure of merit. And that property owner would like to rebuild that and and under since it's in the slide mass area, cannot do that under the current version of the ordinance. So this ordinance would allow the rebuilding, if, if the council agrees, would allow the rebuilding of a structure of merit within slide mass C. As far as we know, this is the only structure of merit or land, it's not a landmark, but this ordinance would apply to landmarks as well. As far as we know, it's the only structure that's ever going to trigger this, this ordinance, but that's the proposal. Um, so with that, I think I'll just turn it over to Mr. Estrella. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Estrella? Chair White, members of the Ordinance Committee, what brings us here today is, uh, is a geological and soils engineering exploration study that was prepared by uh, Grover Hollingsworth and Associates uh, Incorporated. The report was uh, uh, prepared in May 29th, 09, and of course it was submitted to the city for review. And we, of course we had the uh, city's uh, engineering geologist consultant, Mr. Frank Kenton, review that report. Uh, uh, there was a series of questions uh, that was asked and some comments that were responded to. So it was a, it was a process that, uh, that took time. Uh, this is a very serious event. Uh, as uh, Mr. Wiley indicated, we are in support of the amendment, which would allow the construction of four or possibly five uh, new single-family dwellings. What you see up on the screen is the existing Canejo landslide map. Uh, and in the report, there were seven property owners who hired the services of Grover Hollingsworth. And that was uh, 16 Eland, 17 Eland, uh, 11 Eland. <clears throat> also, we have uh, 529 Canejo, 525, 535, and 502. Uh, of the homes that were evaluated by Grover Hollingsworth, uh, apparently, based on the report and uh, in concurrence with Mr. Kenton, uh, we would note that uh, Lot 16 or uh, 16 Eland, 11 Eland, 529 Canejo, uh, 525 Canejo uh, are, uh, has a green light to move forward with construction. 
535 is still questionable, as I will show you in another um, um, uh, map that was prepared by uh, Grover Hollingsworth that shows that the actual boundary line of slab actually kind of goes a little bit more eastward, but it's in this particular area. So if we can have that map. So this is the Grover Hollingsworth uh, map. Again, you see the homes that are in green depict uh, a go basically for permit issuance with the approval uh, and ultimate council's uh, approval of the amended ordinance. Uh, the properties in pink or red are, uh, are properties that we are currently not recommending for reconstruction. And of course, the property here in yellow, uh, also that's questionable at this point. So this is the map that was uh, provided to the city. There was a lot of exploration throughout uh, the, the region, uh, primarily in the eastern upper half portion of the, the slide area, up in this area uh, also. And so based on that, we're asking the Ordinance uh, Committee to also move forward with the approval of this. I do want to add a, a few more, um, a little bit more in terms of information. Uh, the current ordinance uh, needs to be very clear. Uh, this is not a matter of interpretation from me as the current building official. This is what the current ordinance says. Uh, it's Chapter 22.90. I can provide a copy if you, if you wish. Um, uh, but, but by uh, definition, the title says, Construction Prohibited in the Vicinity of the Cunejo Road Landslide. And uh, under item C, it says new construction. Well, what is new construction? It is defined. New construction means any man-made change to improved or unimproved real property after June 11, 1991, including but not limited to buildings uh, or other structures, mining, dredging, filling, grading, paving, excavation, or drilling operations, which requires a permit. So clearly at the time that the ordinance was uh, adopted by city council, the intent was to not allow new construction. Unfortunately, over time, either due to a slide activity, due to geological hazards, whatever the case may be, uh, it's apparent to me that the intent of the ordinance was not to allow the construction of new homes. Then that's exactly what, what's being proposed today. In fact, um, there's probably, there's approximately uh, 87 permits that have been issued uh, to the TFAR reconstruction home effort. And these are new homes. I believe there's only about a handful, maybe six uh, in that range, of which they use the existing foundation slab systems that which they can build directly upon the existing slab and foundation. Uh, the rest of the homes uh, that uh, are under construction or currently for review uh, have new, uh, complete brand new foundation systems in compliance with the uh, current building codes. So in effect, what we're looking at are not a reconstruction uh, we're looking at new single-family dwellings that are, that are being proposed. And again, we do support at least four and possibly five, but homes directly uh, in the slide mass. Uh, it's a geological hazard. Uh, we are not currently uh, moving for acceptance in those areas. I do want to just add a tad bit. I was handed a document yesterday uh, by, uh, the, uh, by a consultant, Roy Hawthorne, representing some homeowners, and uh, it was indicated in the staff report, in, in, in a report I believe that you have currently, that um, these floating foundations um, are acceptable in other jurisdictions. Uh, this was brought up in a previous meeting in which I asked Mr. Hawthorne to provide me from some information on what jurisdictions, what cities and counties have approved the so-called floating foundations. Now, a floating foundation is a massive uh, uh, foundation system. It could be very deep. It could be six, five, eight feet in depth and as wide, if not wider, than the uh, uh, footprint of, uh, of the house or the, or the structure. And the concept is, is that as the slide moves, so will the uh, structure. So in essence, uh, as the slide moves, the home is also sliding. Uh, well, to date, I have not received any information uh, indicating that uh, any specific jurisdiction has actually uh, adopted 
uh, this type of a system. By the way, these uh, foundation systems, are they're not new. They're not new technology. They've been around for many, many years and used in a variety of areas that have expansive uh, or alluvium soil conditions, very poor, poor conditions. What is interesting is I have uh, took the liberty to contact a few jurisdictions, city of Malibu, city of Palos Verdes, uh, county of uh, Santa Barbara, and uh, Santa Barbara uh, and Ventura County and spoke to their building officials and some of the geologists. And uh, they do not have, and they have not approved, they're not aware of any of these floating foundation systems that have been approved, uh, approved directly in a, in a known slide condition. Uh, qualifying that statement, some of the jurisdictions do or would evaluate a structure on a case-by-case -case basis, but uh, they're, uh, to their, what they have informed me is that uh, they're not aware of any permits that have been issued with this so-called floating foundation system that slides with the slides. Of course, the bottom line, uh, I think, from, the, from my perspective and, uh, and surely from the city perspective is, is life safety. Uh, obviously, this is... Uh, this is a tragedy. It's not easy. Homeowners who lived in this area for many years have lived in a slight condition. The conditions, if you've seen them lately, uh, do continue to move, although in some cases uh, minimal movement. But in the late, 90, uh, late uh, 98 and uh, uh, 83, 84, there was a significant movement. Uh, so some geologists may indicate that this is a slow slide, but I firsthand have seen in 89 that the slide can move quite rapidly in an El Nino condition. Uh, uh, to further illustrate that, we do live in a very active uh, slide zone. Uh, in, in Santa Barbara and Southern California in particular, uh, we have very active um, uh, seismic activity. So uh, the question uh, that is unknown is uh, if, in fact, you have a wet El Nino year, and uh, we happen to have a, uh, an earthquake, uh, would this be slow acting or, or fast acting? Uh, I, I don't know, I think the jury's out on that. Or you may have a difference of opinions from uh, geologists. Uh, so based on that information, we have done some uh, research in-house. Again, have not been provided with any data to substantiate floating foundations. Again, it's not a new technology, and I cannot locate, I have not located another jurisdiction or county that is permitting these types of foundation systems in slide areas. And also, I just want to correct a, an error that was in a report that was submitted to, to you by Mr. Hawthorne, uh, dated May 10th. It indicated that the county of Santa Barbara, as you're aware, there's a, there's a major slide repair uh, movement going on at the Sycamore Canyon. And they're using tiebacks and buttress systems to uh, an attempt to stabilize the hill. Uh, no applications have been applied for. No applications have been approved. No permits have been issued for homes to be constructed on that slide. And I want to make it clear that there is a difference. There may be a potential difference that if a slide is corrected, uh, that a home may possibly be able to be constructed in the area. But no uh, homes are slated thus far, as confirmed by Mr. Zimmer, the, the county building official. And so I just want to share that bit of information with you at this time. Uh, with that, we do have Mr. Frank Kenton, our uh, engineering uh, geologist, who can answer some questions, myself. And uh, basically, that concludes uh, staff's comments. Thank you, Mr. Australia. Um, and also, I heard one noisemaker. If, if everybody could make sure their cell phone uh, uh, ringers are off, I'd appreciate it. Uh, are there any questions of staff at this point? Okay, then. Um, oh, and Mr. Kenton, did you want to speak now, or are you uh, available, just available for questions? Uh, I'm uh, available for questions. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. House? Uh, yes, actually. Um, would you point out for us, please, Mr. Estrella, on the map where the historic um, structure of merit is located? On this particular map, it would be uh, right where you were, right? Isn't that it? Or you want to go down a little bit more. Oh, there we go. It would be this property. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. That, that is uh, 1809 Stanwood. Then um, I see the line that's the, I believe it's the revised um, perimeter of the slide area, revised from the original um, uh, 
area that now excludes the green homes and possibly the yellow one there. Um, with regards to the area where the historic um, structure of merit is, um, I, I've heard anecdotally that there has not been movement above or around it in terms of actual movement um, and perhaps evidenced by um, power lines or telephone poles or something that haven't tipped or moved or something. What, what's the stability of the area there? Is, I don't, it looks like the line kind of trails off and I can't see where it really goes. Uh, uh, for, to, for, in order to answer that, I'd like to put up a, uh, the, the most current uh, map. Great, thank you. Okay. okay, you want to put it up on the, uh, want to put it on the overhead? Um, we're going to put this up on this other overhead. That really clears it up. <laughs> right. This shows so the elevation. We have right. the topographical lines in there. So in answer to your question, here's the property that uh, you're talking about, uh, 1809 Stanwood. If you see the, the uh, slide mass C boundary line, it does come and extend down to actually the center of the creek area. So this is the boundary that is uh, currently uh, being proposed. Uh, of course, on the uh, east side over here, that's where the boundary line is going most uh, easternly and will allow some homes. It's hard, it's, in terms of activity, I'd I like to remind uh, uh, city, uh, 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 the uh, ordinance committee that in, in late, uh, I believe it was 98, 99, there was significant slide movement along the western side that came very close to this area. Uh, it was it was a debris flow. It was a slow moving uh, debris flow. Thank goodness, and it came very close to uh, this property, uh, uh, which is 17, I believe, 61 uh, Sycamore Canyon. So uh, that uh, and then of course our public works uh, department uh, uh, also monitors. I believe I'd see they're on a six month or perhaps on a yearly basis now. Uh, they have uh, monuments and they do monitor movement. And there is some movement in the, in the entire region. I'm going to ask Mr. Frank Kenton to provide you with his opinion as to slide activity along this area, in particular to 1809 Thank uh, you. Stanwood. Mr. Kenton. Thank you, Mr. Straya. Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, the first map you were uh, looking at with, with the um, incomplete slide boundaries there's, it's the result of Grover's Hollingsworth's work, and uh, they weren't commissioned to map the entire the entire landslide. Uh, the map um, that was just shown on here mm -hmm. that was up um, reflects their adjusted slide boundaries. In the area of 1809, um, it reflects um, the earlier mapping with 1809 being in part of uh, the GTC slide mass B and some of slide mass C. Sycamore Creek, uh, has, it takes a uh, bend in that area. That bend is, is, in my opinion, reflective of very old landslide movement that has <clears throat> bowed the creek out. Um, up, up above it, where the power lines uh, exist, uh, those pow power poles were relocated. Uh, they had existed uh, uh, before further up slope, and I believe it was 1978 or 79. There was a landslide that caused uh, Southern California Edison to move the the um, power poles to their present location. Um, 1809 um, is underlain by landslide debris. Um, it is um, not possibly as active as you would see uh, in the area of 17 Eland Place. Uh, I have not re reviewed any geologic uh, uh, documents with uh, uh, borings and deep subsurface uh, um, exploration that would uh, show where that slide boundary lies underneath the the site. 
but it uh, appears uh, to the be underlie the the house itself. Thank you, Mr. Kenton. Appreciate that, and thanks, Mr. Stray. Mr. Ho uh, Mr. Hotchkiss. Mr. Kenton, um, have the techniques or the science that you deal with changed much in the last twenty years? Would you say? Well, of, of course, uh, the science has changed. Uh, we're uh, GPS oriented. Uh, there's a lot of new new technology out. Uh, some of the um, concepts of, of floating mats uh, that that concept has has uh, been around for for quite a while. Uh, techniques such as buttressing of landslides. Those concepts. Uh, have existed for a long time. Of course, there can be some refinement and improvement. The use of tiebacks, like you're seeing in it down the road, that technology has existed for a very long time. Maybe the products and maybe some of the bonding agents have improved. Uh, how about the techniques of just actually determining what a real land mass moving is? In other words, I, I'm sort of asking, I, I feel like this is more a little bit of an art, not a science. But please don't think that I'm denigrating at all. But I, I have the sensation or the impression that tomorrow, if this all moved, we'd not be re redrawing our maps because nature forced us to. Well, you have to really look at the history of the slide. Uh, the Caneo Road uh, landslide started out as a very small slide, mm -hmm. and that's why it was originally mapped by GTC as slide mass A, B, and C. A being a slide that showed some activity in 1969, 1978, and again in, in 83. In 1983, the uh, slide started to grow, and, and features um, were then mapped. Um, so, yes, as, as time progresses, if the, the slide becomes more active and it enlarges, um, then you, we will see changes changes in the map. But my, uh, historically, do slides get smaller as well as sometimes get larger? I have never seen them really decrease in size as far as their their state of activity. You know, um, they there's older landslide material underlying this area, and it is with some geologic controversy exactly where the older landslide material is in the exact configuration, but it appears that the landslide is a reactivation of some of that older landslide material. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Hodgkiss. All right, well, we have eight uh, speakers, um, and I'd like to open the public comment portion of this uh, hearing. So starting with Roy Harthorn and uh, followed by Vadim Zhu. And we do have a two-minute limit, and Mr. Harthorn, we did get your correspondence, in, at least in time for us to, to read it, and so hopefully we can use that as our basis. Good. I, I rely on that. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a complex issue. My name is Roy Harthorn. I'm re uh, representing a variety of neighbors uh, affected by the Caneo slide and the city ordinance concerning building inside as well as adjacent to the slide. Uh, most of you know me uh, as your former building official, and uh, I'm still very active as a consulting building official to a variety of city and county agencies. I offer um, code consulting, uh, plan review, and inspection services to uh, over five jurisdictions. Um, Given the com complex history of the, the neighborhood, the, the city's involvement in the slide itself, I have to provide you with that memo and uh, hope you uh, can, can read through it. Uh, I'm going to highlight a few items in here, but before delving into that, I, I want to thank uh, city staff and, and city council for taking up this issue and, and their, their continued work on it. Over the past 26 years, there's been uh, many city council meetings on this topic and thousands of staff hours devoted to this, uh, this item. Uh, from a political and social justice standpoint, I wish T.M. Stork was here today. Um, this was his property. He subdivided this in, in, in the 30s. Um, he was a proponent of uh, constitutional rights. I want and, you to get uh, to, that's an issue. to the, your, or your suggestions because we don't have much time. Right. Um, 
There are three options that I have recommended at the end of my report. Um, I, I do want to speak uh, briefly to a couple items that were um, alluded to me, uh, in particular by Mr. Estrella. Uh, there are two um, particular um, places where these alternative foundations have been approved. Rancho Palos Verdes, um, the engineer of record is uh, David Breholtz, and the uh, architect of record is David Stone. And you can provide that to, to Mr. Yes. Estrella. Uh, and I made reference to that earlier in a meeting on January 7th to Mr. Estrella. And the uh, property owner at uh, 486 Caneo Road uh, adapted a, um, a pre-approved foundation design and approved uh, by Mr. Estrella's uh, staff uh, to reflect a deep foundation system, and that, that house actually survived the, the slide and uh, does utilize these deep grade beam foundation technologies. We have 30 uh, seconds left. Thank you. 30 seconds. Right. Okay. Three options. One, repeal the ordinance. The ordinance has really uh, outlived its, um, its useful life. It was uh, created as not, uh, as Mr. Wiley suggested, uh, from the beginning to um, amortize or depreciate the homes. It was instead a timeout to study the issue and to come up with, with fixes and solutions. That concept of amortization and um, depreciation developed in 1999. Option two, uh, revise the ordinance to uh, essentially allow rebuilding of homes lost to non-geologic causes. That means fire, um, other things not related to the slide. That is how other okay. communities do so. And the third option, of course, is to recognize engineered solutions such as Grover Hollingsworth has, um, has recommended. And I have provided you with some photographs of a model uh, of such a system. And I don't have 11 copies, but since you're only a group of three, uh, I think we can get by with the six that I, I brought. Great. So, Thank you. Uh, in, in closure, uh, I, I am also speaking to uh, one other uh, item, which is the, um, the historic building okay. uh, aspect. And we, if you'd you like know, to call we, me back. I've given you double. I've given you, a, yeah, if we use it as another agenda okay. item, but I don't think we are. All right. I've given you double your time, so uh, uh, that opens us up so we're going to. We could use up our entire hour on this if I give it. If there's any the additional time. time at the end, I'd like to speak to that issue. Thank you. Thank you. And also if you have a problem with it. Uh, Mr. Vadim Su, followed by uh, Lori Bono. Uh, Chair White, members of council, my name is Vadim Shu, and I'm sure most of you know I'm an architect. I'm not a geologist. But I have uh, reviewed the um, Grover Hollingsworth report, and I have worked with um, Grover Hollingsworth before, as well as uh, David Breholz, the uh, structural engineer uh, referred to earlier in um, the projects down in the um, L.A. area. Um, first of all, I'd like to just, as a building professional, like to concur with uh, Mr. Estrella that you know our primary goal as building professionals is life safety and is understanding what the code says and how it dictates how, uh, how we build um, safe structures. That being said, it seems to me that if a project that is proposed, um, for example, in this, uh, in, in this uh, area, meets the criteria outlined in a, uh, a, ge a geology report prepared by a very uh, uh, you know, preeminent geologist, and is engineered um, to meet the 2007 building code um, by, again, one of the most uh, respected engineers in the state um, who has done all sorts of alternative foundation designs that have been accepted in, in all sorts of municipalities, not just this type of foundation, but others. But if something can be designed that meets the code and meets the, um, the accepted report, um, it seems to me that that should be a structure that uh, is and that can be deemed as uh, meeting the life safety criteria of the 2007 building code. It seems like that should be um, a wonderful opportunity to um, sort of get out of a real thorny situation that we find ourselves in and really look at something that's innovative, um, potentially very green, although that's maybe a little off topic, but sustainable nonetheless. 
and presents an opportunity and a solution rather than a thorn. And I think it kind of satisfies all aspects of, I think, what we're here to talk about today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your timeliness, too. Lori Bono to be followed by Bob Hollingsworth. Hi, my name is Lori Bonneau. Thank you for seeing us here today. Um, I'm in 525. Conejo was one of the greenhouses. And it's really going to be a greenhouse after we rebuild. <laughs> um, I just want to say the house was built in 1963. So the 70 slides, 80 slides, 90 slides, our house was not affected. It hasn't moved. We didn't have a bunch of cracks or creaking or anything else. So I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that and... If it wasn't for the fire, we'd be there today. Thank you. I just want Thank to you, Ms. Bonneau. Yes. And uh, it's green, so that's, that's good. Uh, Bob Hollingsworth, followed by David Wheaton. Good afternoon. Bob Hollingsworth, Grover Hollingsworth & Associates. Um, we're the geologists and engineers who have prepared the report. I'd um, like to address a couple of issues in response to Mr. Hodgkin's question. Um, some of the techniques have improved, but one of the things that was improved, unfortunately, by the fire was the visibility of the area. Burned off a lot of vegetation, mm -hmm. removed most of the houses, and allowed our firm a greater opportunity um, to observe the conditions than had been done by GTC in the past. Um, in addition, um, my geologists, um, we drilled about, I think, seven or eight borings, and all of those were downhole logged by the geologist, where he descended up to 80 feet into the ground to directly observe the earth materials. With respect to the question of, of building an active landslides, um, that's been done for a considerable period of time in Rancho Palos Verdes and the Portuguese Bend slide. There's houses in that area that have been on flexible foundation systems now for years and have moved so far that they've had to revise the state map act so that the property moves along with the house because they've moved three, 400 feet. Um, in terms of the speed of the landslide, which is basically what relates to the life safety issue, this is a slow moving landslide, um, basically because it has a fairly flat slide plane, very low angle. Um, we would anticipate that that would also be slow moving during a seismic event. Um, that the reversals of the ground motion during that event are not likely to trigger any rapid movement of this slide. So we would anticipate that this slide would continue to move slowly and afford any um, individuals with time to get out of, of the structure. The real issue is just being able to re-level it, check it periodically so it remains connected to the utilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hollingsworth. Uh, Mr. House has a question for you, Mr. Hollingsworth. Okay. Mr. Hollingsworth, I just want to um, reference, this is, um, this was your com company's yes. communication to us. There were some things in here that um, I found really interesting, and I, and I know it's, it's important to us because it's included in our uh, revised ordinance here, and you, your, uh, um, and you had some comments. Um, you were talking about that the, 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 the limits that we saw, we see from here and then connected with the previous ones from Mr. Kenton indicate the current understanding of the landslide. We should talk about first, for the first time, the planned ordinance prohibits the construction of septic systems, sewer, sewer laterals, water piping, and landscape sprinklers within 25 feet of slide mass C. And, um, and yet you went on further and talked about how you didn't seem to think that that was necessary uh, to be included in here. Um, curious and disingenuous that the city is now attempting to use the T-Fire to restrict the installation of sewers within the Caneo landslide and thereby prohibit reconstruction of the fire-destroyed residents. Um, and lastly, you said it's your opinion that the inhabitants of properly built residences within the Caneo landslide will not be at risk. Could you comment to some of those things? I want to make sure I get them in the right context. Sure. Um, the initial residences in this area were on private sewage disposal. Um, 
private sewage disposal by in its nature injects water into the subsurface, which is not a good condition in terms of the landslide. So like that's that, that's like uh, septic tanks and right that septic kind of tanks, okay. seepage pits. It's kind of uh, counterproductive. Okay. So as part of the earlier work, when the the city recognized the slide, they installed a sewer system and they installed some drainage improvements as well, okay. and those were to uh, allow the uh, residents is to continue to be inhabited and to reduce the slide movement. And it appeared to me that um, those particular uh, features had not previously been prohibited in the slide, and now it looked like kind of a backdoor way of, of prohibiting reconstruction by saying you can't uh, build sewer systems when, in fact, a sewer system and a proper drainage system is a very good idea to put within the landslide to reduce the water. Okay, and what about the um, the comment? Oh, you, you two things last. You said the 25 foot setback that we're talking about here. It seems to be that your uh, recommendation is that this be really focusing on the horizontal setback with regards to the landslide surface. Am I reading that correctly? Um, Vertical, horizontal. Which right. Well, basically, the the landslide surface as it goes beneath the ground slopes down towards the center of the slide. My comment would be if this is the ground and the slide surface is going this way, you should measure your distance down in the ground at the base of your foundation. So if somebody wanted to build a retaining wall right on the edge of the slide boundary, they could put that wall on a pile system so that it's, it still had the 25-foot setback to the slide surface. Got it's it. just a recognition that slides don't go vertically down into the ground. Okay, and then last thing was this comment um, about the um, the opinion that the inhabitants of properly built residences within a canal landslide will not be at risk. And is that the properly built? Is that referring to something what Mr. Shu just mentioned, or that we had Mr. Um, Hawthorne was talking about? What, what is it that you're talking about when you? Yes, say that? that's what we're all speaking about. Is a foundation system that's strong enough to uh, remain intact and move along with the slide. I see, and you're talking about within the, like to the left of that line up there that's on the screen right now. Correct, that would be for properties in red. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Wiley. Mr. Chair, I just want to be clear about this. I think Mr. Hollingsworth has misread the city ordinance. A, a separate city ordinance adopted 1984 at the same time as this slide prohibition ordinance prohibited septic systems new septic systems in this area. So septic systems, new sewer lines have been prohibited for 26 years now. With this ordinance is not changing any of that. He, I, apparently he just misread the ordinance. Septic and sewer, both are prohibited well, by that other question, Mr. Holling. Yeah, and with new construction, there'd be no need to have a new sewer lateral. It, it's a city sewer system up there, but we prohibited septic systems since 1984 in this area. Thank you, Mr. Wiley. Mr. Hotchkiss? I guess this is for you, but maybe also for staff. How do you put a sewer system in, 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 in land that's slowly moving? I mean, it's going to break. Well, correct. You use, use flexible piping, plastic piping. They're installed relatively shallow so that they can be repaired and they have to be monitored. Um, uh, well, again, let's ask Mr. Stray on that one. Is that feasible? Or would it have to be above ground, or what would one do? Uh, flexible uh, sewer systems aren't normally used. It could be used in, a, in that particular area as an alternate. And uh, getting back to the very basis of why it's being prohibited, because simply if it pulls apart or becomes disconnected, you have water and sewage in that area that we feel just might exacerbate the, the slide area. Right. That's why we're not, you know, we're not currently uh, supporting sprinklers or sewer systems or septic systems. Right. Well, you'd agree with that? Well, I would agree with the with the sprinkler systems, the the sewer system is there. It's been installed. The houses were on uh, sewer systems with shallow pipes in new um, easements that had been established after the slide. Okay, well, I'm not an expert in this field. I don't think it's your field of expertise either, but apparently there's some problem when you put like pipes underground, the earth starts to move, something's going to give. Well, correct, correct. And, and they do have to be monitored, okay. and, and the slide itself is monitored, and after movement, then the pipe should be monitored. Other question, do, do you feel that the so-called red houses here are, are constructible using the techniques you were talking about? 
Yes, we had recommended that. Great, thank you. All right, and one more time, oh, I think. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. House? No, no, I think that's it. I just felt, I, not to get into a great, huge debate, but we are relying to a great degree on your report, and that's why I wanted to ask you those questions. Okay. Was there anything that you needed to add from our conversation so far? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hollingsworth. Okay, David Wheaton, followed by Linda, I believe it's Dye. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Dave Wheaton, and I'm a concerned homeowner. My property is this one right here. Yeah, I just since he points. Okay. We'll need to get you back on the mic here, Mr. Wheaton. The slide represents maybe five percent of our property, maybe seven percent, very low uh, percentage of it. And I think my question is for the attorney: um, Would I have problems getting a building permit? The fire did come through our yard and almost took our house. We were very lucky, but in, in this situation, how? how much of that slide would affect our building ability. You're concerned about the buildability of your home, uh, rebuildability of your home, should it, should it yeah, burn exactly. down? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So do we have a comment from Mr. Wiley on that? Mr. Chair, and, and maybe Mr. Estrella probably may know the specifics better than I do, but the general principle is as long as you're not building within the slide area or within 25 feet of the slide area, you're fine. And my look at that map tells me that that home is apparently more than 25 feet away from the slide area. But Mr. Estrella may know more specifically. That's correct. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wheaton. Uh, so Ms. Dye, or is that correct? And then, uh, and then Kellum DeForest. Hi. Okay. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Um, and I appreciate the staff support and work on this project. Now I'd like to give you a, a brief summary of my extensive research on this process and the fact that I've been involved with this for seven years. Um, I did purchase the house with a valid building permit to replace the foundation in June of 2002. I really have no idea what I've done to create such resistance to my living in this house. Um, basically, if you check me out, I'm a law-abiding, responsible citizen. I've worked for 18 years as an ecologist for Channel Islands National Park. And after working in natural resource conservation for 40 years, I'm about to retire. And recently, my health has deteriorated, and I really need to do that. However, I've put the majority of my financial resources into this house. So now, it really is my primary residence and I'm carrying three mortgages, which I can't continue to do. Sorry, I'm emotional. So far, I've given the staff everything they've asked for. Documentation of the history of the house with City of Santa Barbara records back to 1947 house permit and the 58th City Council recognition of the house as a house um, and documentation of it being inhabited for 31 years engineered, stamped, and drawn plans based on the original permit, documentation of, that the house can be readily repaired and that reconnected to existing utilities, validated historic reports, documentation as a Santa Barbara structure of merit, state point of historic interest, now included in the California Register of Historic Places, all protected by CEQA, documented as the oldest historic house intact in the Conejo Road area and geology reports by a City of Santa Barbara engineering geologist consultant, um, a professional soldier. I appreciate it report. if you could get to your, your requests at this okay. point. Yeah. Um, anyway, it all validates that the house is safe to live in, has never been impacted by all, at all by the slide. There was no impact to the house in the late 70s earthquake, and that the slide path is actually moving in a different direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I realize this isn't a mansion. It's a simple house. It's my retirement dream. I would like to ask and you and staff and be reassured that passing this amendment as agreed to by city staff based on my complying with their requests that I will actually be allowed to live in this house. As far as I know, I've given the city all necessary plans to be able to repair the house. And once I've repaired that house and passed their inspection, I would like to live there. Okay. 
And I Ms. appreciate Dine. your consideration of all my challenges. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dine. And here are copies of this for the record. Great. If we could give Back the staff. Into... Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. DeForest, uh, followed by Pamela Barajas. Good afternoon. I'm Kellum DeForest, and I'm referring specifically to the 1809 Stanwood uh, historic structure. Uh, and uh, have you read the historic structures report, which gives a detailed analysis of the structure and its history? And you will note that, as Ms. Dye said, the house has existed since 1947, before many of the houses further up the Caneo Hill were built. And uh, it is probably obvious that the slide may have been exacerbated by septic tanks and sprinkler systems done in the 50s, 60s when that area on Caneo was developed. So I think maybe now that the city has been, been more careful and put in a sewer system and I hope will not allow overwatering by the residents, that I see no reason why uh, Ms. Dye's request and uh, the, this ordinance amendment relating to 1809 Stanwood cannot go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. Uh, Ms. Is it Barajas? Am I correct with that pronunciation? She was right here. She was right here. Is this she? She left. Sorry. Okay. Well, um, is there anybody else who wishes to speak at this point? I just don't want to. There's anybody who didn't hand in a speaker slip? Okay, then it is back to the committee. Um, Mr. Hotchkiss, you want to lead off? Right, Mr. Straya, could you address Ms. Dye's comments? Do you have any comment one or the other? I'd like to make some general statements. Uh, as we know it today, uh, this property is clearly within the Can You Have a Landslide Mass C? Um, uh, again, there may be differing opinions, and uh, 1809 Stanwood in particular. Uh, the amended uh, ordinance before you would allow the construction of this of this structure. Uh, I do have to tell you the, the reconstruction. Thing, right? reconstru yeah. Well, it'd be reconstruction of, of this uh, structure. Hmm. I do want to just briefly let you know that this structure was off its foundation. It's dilapidated. It uh, substandard. I know because during the late uh, 1998. Uh, a slide that was adjacent to the Kinejo, I walked through that structure. It was completely off its foundation. You had large, large trees growing through the house and through the windows. And uh, what I would say that there was an effort uh, made uh, to rehabilitate the structure. I don't recall 2002, perhaps in that area. I don't, don't recall exact date, in which uh, a person came to the front counter in an attempt to try to get a building permit to rehabilitate the structure. <laughs> This individual was uh, representing the trust at that time, and he was turned down three times. Um, persistence and in an attempt to get a um, seismic uh, retrofit permit, it was subsequently issued in error, basically, is what had happened. A neighbor called us up, brought us to our attention, and, and we issued a stop work order on the property. Subsequently, my understanding is Ms. Dye purchased the property, and it's been in that state since. I, I think they tried to preserve it and do what they can. But the, the, the issue was this permit was issued in error, and in my opinion, there was some dubious tactics going on in order to not in associate with Mrs. Dye, but under a previous person, to try to get the structure rehabilitated, and she bought the property this way. Uh, in, in a accordance with uh, what I believe to be the uh, current uh, Conejo uh, uh, ordinance, uh, uh, reconstructing a dilapidated structure uh, would be prohibited. 
uh, it would take extensive work. Uh, can this home be constructed? Yes. In fact, uh, it would come under the historic building code, which actually is a little bit more liberal in terms of being constructed. I'm not as sure exactly. I know some preliminary plans may have been submitted. I have not seen them in a while. But assuming that this ordinance does go forward, uh, I'm under the belief that uh, this, uh, this structure could be reconstructed. However, I think there's some clarification that needs to be made, and that is, one, is this a legal lot? Uh, and uh, that's another item. And two, uh, there was a permit that was issued uh, uh, for a single-family dwelling. It went up to frame inspection, and it was stopped. Subsequently, that permit was never approved. So there's some questions as to whether or not this was really a legal structure by the term definition legal with parcel and approved building permit, despite the fact that uh, I'm sure people lived in it for a number of years. We have many structures that are built uh, without permit, unfortunately, and the fact that they exist does not necessarily make them a legal structure. So there's some questions pertaining to that. I think that need to be fleshed out also. So I don't know if Mr. Wiley would like to comment on that, but that is an item that possibly could prohibit from this structure moving forward uh, to be reconstructed. Thank you, Mr. Estrella. Mr. Wiley? Here, well, I just, since Mr. Estrella mentioned it, there are certain things in, in the record. Uh, when we look at something like this, and actually we're fortunate that the city's got pretty good historical records. and. When we looked at the history of 1809 Stanwood, one thing that, that jumps out, I can't remember the year, it was uh, possibly the late 40s, a permit was issued, convert shed to habitable structure. It was a shed at one point. And that permit was issued shortly after the city had sent the property owner a code enforcement letter, just, just like nowadays. The code enforcement letter indicated that we had a complaint that somebody was living in a shed. And the property owner, Mr. Flores at the time, responded properly and pulled a permit to convert a shed to a living space. That, as Mr. Estrella mentioned, that, sh that permit was never finalized. So it's as if it had never been issued. If you don't get a permit finalized, you don't get the final inspection, you haven't validated that permit. Uh, the other thing we did in this, in this case to figure out if this was ever actually used as a home was go and see if it ever had utilities. And we have no record of a city water meter ever at this shed, no Edison, I believe no Edison meter, no gas service. To us, that's pretty good indication this was historically never, you know, it was probably built years and years ago as a shed, may have been occupied by members of a family or something like that, that doesn't mean it's legal, and that doesn't mean it. Uh, I, I think the question really, Ms. Dye's asking, if this ordinance move forward, will she be allowed to live in this home? I think she's getting closer. If, if the council does support allowing this shed, which is now a structure of merit, to be rebuilt, and incidentally, uh, Jake Jacobus, city historian, I don't want to speak for him, but he looked at this and he pointed out some things about it looked at this structure actually looks like it was two sheds put together at one point uh, just the nature of it uh, two two buildings uh, moved and put on a foundation years ago so anyway it, it is what it is if it, it's rebuilt it would be rebuilt or reconstructed in accordance with the secretary of the interior guidelines for structures of merit and presumably someone could live in it however it does not appear that this parcel was ever separated off from the main parcel, which is actually there closer to the creek, and you drive over a bridge to get to it. And it, this parcel would need to be either get a lot split, or if the owners believe that they have a legal lot, they would apply for a certificate of compliance and go through that process. But before we could allow anyone to live in it as a separate home, they would have to get a certificate of compliance or a lot sp split approval. Okay. Uh -huh. um, Mr. Estrella, do I understand right, if we pass the f first ordinance, that all the so-called yellow and green buildings would fly, they could be reconstructed? Uh, yes, that's true. The, uh, the green buildings would be a go. The yellow building is questionable, as you can see that the uh, revised Conejo uh, 
uh, slide C is is just really close to the the structure, so we'd have to take a little bit closer look at that to determine uh, whether that house could be shifted, maybe a different configuration. Uh, uh, there would have to be some uh, additional analysis on that site uh, to determine in uh, the distance in relation to the the slide edge, and. Uh, uh, that's why it's a question. That's why we have it as yellow. We don't know yet. There's further exploration that would be needed. Undetermined. Mr. Wiley, um, if the people with the homes in red uh, agreed to hold the city harmless, could they be allowed to build, or are there other problems that I don't understand? Well, actually, the original ordinance in 84 required that. But that's not the concern. It, it really, I'll, I'll be honest with you, liability to the city or liability on the city's part has never been the concern. It's purely a public safety concern. So uh, it, we, would, we would possibly have them waive any claim of liability and defend and indemnify the city. But that's sort of uh, beside the point, really. It's, it's the public safety concern. And we're talking about public safety, safety of the people in those homes? Yes. So if they agree and, and to people who might who be impacted by that home coming down on top of them, I, I assume. Okay. Thank you, Mr. House. Sure. I, um, let's see. Let's go down to the lower part of that uh, image, if you would, please. I want to see the um, yeah down there. You go. Thank you. Um, I'm following the line. It's in the recent, the most recent um, uh, perimeter that goes above the home that's on that unsubdivided property there, the one that's just uh, to the right of the 1809. And I see that it, that line stops up there, right there you go. And um, and then do you have the uh, the revised uh, total perimeter that you could put back up there? I want to be sure I yes. understand this, because I think that includes the small 1809 building as well. Let me just see here. Here's 1809. Um all right. Property. So where's the perimeter on this revised line? So that goes below the home that's to the right. So can you reconcile that for me, please, on the, the one that comes out of the Grover Hollingsworth and Associates? Yeah. Uh, the line is above the home to the right, and if I were to follow the topo topographical lines, it would even appear to possibly go above the small structure that we're talking about today. Um, but this doesn't seem to resolve it in the same way that... Anyway... Mr. Kenton might be able to help us. Okay. Sir. The line um, that you're referring to is essentially back behind that, the house, which I believe is uh, a 1815 Stanwood. Mm -hmm. That that line uh, was uh, mapped by Grover, Grover's Hollingsworth as the toe of the active landslide movement. Okay. Um, I have personally observed that same line to be adjacent to and slide de debris resting against the back of 1815 Sandwood in 1998. So the, the boundary uh, can have some variance, but at the same time earth material was moving at, at uh, Elin Place, it was also down there as active the larger landslide boundary that is part of the ordinance includes some of the uh, older landslide material that's uh, underlying that area. I see, okay, and then um, there was some, um, I can't remember who said that the direction of the movement of the landslide has not been in the direction of the, the structure of merit. Um, that it's going another way, or that that area hasn't been affected, either by the neither by the earthquake nor by the um, by the other the previous activity. Can you comment on that, please? Sure. That's 1809. I'm talking about. Uh, perhaps we should have the other the ordinance map. It's ordinance map. Or uh, this? Can you put this? Map? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, landslide movement has been uh, in this direction, and uh, if we go up, landslide movement is also. If my light, where is it? It's going out. My light is going out. Uh, I'm it's having a hard time down. following the the light. Both. Well, I'm not like... either because it's somehow I don't know. I'm. It, it's it. going out on me. Um, <clears throat> perhaps would you like me to point it out? The, uh, 
Yeah, well, it's just might as well see it. That's as long as we're up here doing this. Uh, uh, I, well, I, mean, I, I think me, both of two, two light swords have, have seemed to have the same problem of, of flashing on and off. So it's, I didn't know whether that's the, 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 the graphic or the... And you'll need to be get on the mic when you speak, so we have a, a yeah, we're technical up here. Uh, oh, perfect. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Now, uh, now, now we're we're, we're working. Okay, this is the uh, uh, part of the active landslide. This area was originally mapped as landslide A. The, the movement is moving in this direction. And this portion, which includes landslide mass C, the movement is coming down in this direction. What people are uh, talking about uh, is that <clears throat> I believe uh, there 1809 is trying to be isolated outside of the current active movement. <clears throat> Um, it, 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 with, with the deflection of the slide in this area, it's obvious that the whole landslide has moved directly down. The more current movement, or most recent active movement, is um, on either side of 1809. Going yeah, sort of to the yeah, right and to the left. To the right and to the right and the left, but it does not mean that there is not landslide material underneath this house. It does not mean that that material doesn't have the potential to reactivate. Okay, got it. And it hasn't been tested. There's been uh, no there there has been no uh, uh, deep uh, geologic borings drilled on that parcel to define the, the uh, geometric relationship of the underlying older landslide material and undisturbed bedrock. All right. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That was much clearer. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. House? Well, I know we're kind of getting to where we're going to make some comments yes, here. Just, are you done with your questions? I just had one last I have, one. I have a question. Too, okay, but. for Mr. Wiley. Mr. Wiley, um, I know that we've, as an institution, we've had some real resistance to the improvements on 1809, that particular parcel. Um, but if it's listed as a structure of merit and if um, as Mrs. Dye is able to uh, reconstructed on its foundation or constructed on its foundation, however you look at it, and, and uh, wishes to live there. Um, is what, What's in the public's interest here um, with regards to that particular parcel? Would, you know, it's a, what's compelling about it from our perspective, or isn't it really that big of a deal? Could she go ahead and do that if, we could, if she could get the lot split and, and follow through with these other things and build it according to code? Mr. Chair, Council Member House. Um, you know, I'm not sure I can give you a good answer to that question other than say it is it is a policy call. It's it's a balancing. Um, my understanding, my uh, reaction to to looking into this particular property in detail and reading the historic structures report, for example, was that the report writer got turned around with respect to the Flores Ranch and the outbuildings and was talking about another structure altogether. I think, and Mr. Stray and I appeared at the HLC meeting and we tried, and, and Mr. Jacobus as well, and we tried to discuss some of these things. And, uh, you know, HLC said, no, we think it's a structure of merit. Uh, personally, I believe the record's very clear. This was an outbuilding. This was a shed. This was not the historic Flores home. It, but now it's a structure of merit. And uh, somebody wants to rebuild this shed as a, a small home. It, it's a policy call. Uh, I, I had, and I may be wrong about this, uh, I had understood that the concern was also that this, this slide would come down on top of this home and not so much that the ground underneath the home would move. Maybe it's both. But I, I guess I'm, I'm saying it's a balancing and, and uh, uh, that's what the city council would do we we could conceivably get a restored structure of merit out of it uh, a small home um, but uh, in the long run other people are going to want to live there and uh, 
the record should be clear, needs to be clear, that there is a geological concern here if you're buying this home in the future. Thank you. That's, that's my question. Okay, thank you. I have one question to Mr. Estrella, and that was that uh, Mr. Hollingsworth, I believe, mentioned that Rancho Palos Verdes had approved the floating foundation design, or if I can use my own hacked version of that discussion. I'm still waiting for evidence to be uh, forwarded to me. Okay. And uh, I did make a call there this morning, matter of fact, and talked to uh, the geologist and, and the building official. And I asked him to a question. Uh, I, I believe there may be some properties in the surrounding areas of the slide, very close to it. But I asked him a specific question. Uh, do they have this flo floating foundation system directly in a known slide area that's moving? To their knowledge, they said no. Uh, you know, uh, I've asked how long have they been working there. They've been there for a few years, so maybe past history might might yield some information. But I, I would again ask that if uh, uh, you know Mr. Hollingsworth or uh, Mr. Hawthorne has any information, please forward that to me, and right. we'd so be we, open to uh, at least uh, review it and consider. Right. So we don't have doc documentation to that effect at this point. Okay, that's my only question. Um, ready for comments. Mr. House, well, I'm just going to step right in. I think then what we have in front of us is um, uh, is an appropriate um, response to the information that we have. The adjustment of the line um, uh, that uh, came from the from the Grover Hollingsworth study, um, and then connecting it to the line that was there prior to that, um, and the so relieving, if you will, four and possibly five homes from that burden um, for the one ordinance is is. Uh, an appropriate step in. And I think uh, although we can't give full assurance to Mrs. Dye that 1809 is going to be inhabitable, I mean that she can actually have that as a home to live in, the, the steps to accomplish that are in front of her and you're working with her the best you can to do that. And that's the, the ordinance that addresses the historic structure is an appropriate one as well. So I will be supporting the staff's recommendation today. Thank you, Mr. House. Mr. Hotchkiss? Uh, I support the first one. I've got real doubts about the second one. Um, we'll just leave it at that. So, do we need do we need a motion at this point? Should we take an order? My, for my comments. Then, oh, I beg your pardon. That's all right. Um, I I agree with Mr. House. Um, I, I while I appreciate uh, 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 Mr. Wiley's and Mr. Straya's uh, uh, dialogue with HLC, um, it's a structure of merit. I'll go along with the that next incremental step. This does not guarantee an habitable structure. As best as I understand, it says this structure can be uh, rebuilt as it was, and we've heard the word shed used. But the habitability would be the next increment that would be dependent on several steps of uh, validating a parcel or creating a parcel and so forth and so on. So with that, uh, I, I do appreciate that out of this tragedy came a, a, an excellent effort to improve the buildability and to give many people rights to, uh, to return to their homes here. And so that part of it, I think, is, has been very constructive and certainly uh, uh, not easy. But uh, I appreciate that that's, we, we, we've improved on the history on this. So I look for a motion at this point. Yes, Mr. Chair, I, I uh, move the staff recommendation. This is maybe uh, let's do it since Mr. Hotchkiss is having concerns about the historic landmark piece. Right. Let's have the okay. one at a time. Yeah. Then um, uh, I'll move um, the Municipal Code Chapter 2290 construction prohibited in the vicinity of the Ganeo slide landslide uh, amendments that are in our staff report. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the ordinance uh, change vis-a-vis -vis the location of the, sl of the slide area, et cetera. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So we have, a, we have approval of that. Okay. And recommendation then, uh, to council to approve right, that. That's true. Thank you. Uh, to the full council. <laughs> um, and then also um, I, um, I move the uh, amendments to Chapter 22.22 .22, Historic Structures uh, included in our staff report. And I'll second that. And again, recommendation to city council. Right. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. And Mr. So, Chair, if I may just make a quick comment. Uh -huh. uh, there were uh, a few uh, uh, of our speakers have suggested that as 
um, technology improves, as there are other opportunities, even our, our buildings, uh, you know, our staff uh, are open to that as a possibility, and perhaps in the future we will be able to revisit this slide area. Certainly in the uh, meantime, we're going to be as cautious as we can be, but I hope we do stay open to whatever new um, uh, techniques and new information comes along, and I do uh, appreciate those comments and hope we'll keep that dialogue open for the future. I, I, I totally appreciate that comment, Mr. House. We've uh, seen how uh, landslides can be a whole wide range of things from a, an annoyance to uh, downright deadly. And uh, we, are, we are just like fire. I mean, we have a variety of situations to adapt to here. So uh, if there is more documentation on those floating foundations, please do get it to our building official. Uh, this, this may not be the last conversation held on this. So with that, these two recommendations will go to council, uh, one on a split vote. And uh, thank you all for your testimony today and for your efforts to uh, uh, make this uh, area as buildable as possible. Thank you. And then now this will conclude the